Jesus Christ, our Lord, is called the Prince of Peace because he loves peace. Jesus loved peace to be in this world. He said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. In the Old Testament, there was a man called Melchizedek. We are told that he's without father, without mother. He was called the king of Salem, meaning the king of peace. God is a God of peace. Good morning. You are welcome to I Prevail with Joseph Adenuga. As usual, the God of the universe, the Father of all flesh, your God, my God, your Father, my Father, has put another word in my mouth this morning. The purpose is to encourage you, to motivate you, to inspire you, and to bless you. And so that God himself can come into your life and empower you to prevail over situations and circumstances that drown some other people's destiny. As you hear this word today, may the peace of God fill your life. May the King of Peace breathe a new life of peace into you. May everything around you calm down. May the peace of God take over in the mighty name of Jesus. May you succeed left, right, and center. May the healing power of God overwhelm your home. Let your home be healed. Let your life be healed. Your business, your work is healed. God, the the King of Peace, breathe into into your finances in the mighty name of Jesus. May you go from strength to strength in Zion. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to understand today as I speak on this topic, make peace with all men, that God wants you to be at peace. Peace is so important to God that he is called the king of peace. And Jesus, the son of God, is called the prince of peace. And Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mountain, in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7, Jesus talked too much about peace because God wants peace to be in the world. Remember, in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, God is not happy with the violence of human beings on planet Heart. It is the violence that we human beings brought to this world that made God to regret that he had created human beings on the earth. You see? God is so much concerned about how we live with one another. God is so much concerned about how we behave to one another. God cares the way you talk to him, the way you talk to her. You see, it matters to God the way you look at him in your heart, the way you regard him or disregard him, the way you behave, the way you talk. Some people... I don't know how they are. They can talk you down. They can disgrace you. They can even ignore you. You are talking to them. They don't even, they do as if they don't even hear what you are saying. Because they believe they are on top. They believe they are superior. They believe they are better. They believe there are some people they can't talk to. You are not in my class. That is what they think. I have the class of people I talk to. (laughs) What class of people do you talk to? God made him also. That person you think is too low to you. He was created by God the same way you were created by God. That person you disdain. That person you look down on. That person that is nothing to you is somebody and something to the God who made him. You can't make a single fly. But God who made all mankind want us to live at peace with one another. How can you live in peace with your brother, with your sister? First, you have to be at peace within yourself. If you are not at peace within yourself, you sit down. Your thought is chaotic. You are just thinking evil. 
You are thinking death. You are thinking violence. You are thinking, you are remembering those who offended you. And you are thinking how God must punish them. You are not at peace within yourself. You cannot be at peace with other people. The first step is to be at peace within yourself. When you sit down, what kind of a thoughts do you allow in your heart? Thoughts of violence, thoughts of death, thoughts of fighting. If these are your thoughts, you are not at peace. Something is wrong and you need to write it right now. You need to write that thing in your life that is wrong. When you remember what they have done and all you are thinking is that God should kill them, God should punish them. All you are thinking is that it shall not be well with with them. You are not at peace within yourself. You must be at peace. You must ask God, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. These thoughts of violence in my heart, it's time I stopped. Lord, I regret and I say sorry. I repent and I say I will not think violent thoughts anymore. The second thing is to remember what Jesus Christ, our Lord, taught us on the mountain. He said, you must be at peace. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, he said, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men. God wants you to be gentle, to be kind. God wants you to love every man, every woman that comes to your life. There is no one that comes to your life that does not have a purpose. God has a purpose for linking you to somebody. God has a purpose for releasing somebody to your life to be in a relationship with you. Jesus Christ taught us what to do. He said they will offend you. Forgive. The disciples asked them, asked Jesus, how many times? Seven times is enough? And Jesus said, seven times is not enough at all. Forgive them 70 times, seven times in a day. (laughs) My God, help us. Forgive them 70 times, seven times in a day. That is much. And not only that, he says to you, when they slap your right hand, your, your, your right cheek, turn the left, don't fight back. I'm a God of peace. Don't fight back. In another place, the Bible says, vengeance is mine. I'm going to revenge, says the Lord. Don't revenge yourself. Don't avenge yourself. Don't say, no, this is what they did for me. I'm going to retaliate. God says to you, don't retaliate. You must be at peace with everybody. In fact, Paul said in the book of Philippians, he said, if they cheat you, it's better. Let them cheat you. Don't cheat them back. Don't fight them back. Allow them to cheat you. Allow them to look down on you. This is how to be at peace with yourself and to be at peace with your world. Be at peace with your brothers. Be at peace with your sisters. God is not going to take any glory when you want to prove a point. You want to prove to them that you are wise. You want to prove to them that you are richer than them. You want them to know that God loves you more than them. Don't deceive yourself. (laughs) God doesn't love you more than them. (laughs) This you may not understand. This you may not know. But I know it by experience and I know it by what God told me personally. You are all children of God. I'm a father And I thank God for the children God has blessed me with. I love all my children. Every one of them came from my loins. And I know how I regard my children. I know how much I love my children. And even if you think I love one more than the other, there is no one that I don't love. The one I love, anyone that is needing my help at that time, every help I can do, I am willing, I'm ready, I'm so excited and so honored to do that help because they are my children. How much more God? God said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, what of your father in heaven? God wants you to be at peace with them. 
Another way to be at peace with them is not to speak bad about them in their absence. When you speak bad about people in their absence, Englishman says you are backbiting. Don't backbite people. Don't backbite them. Backbiters are always at the back. Backbiters can never match you. They will forever be at your back. They will forever be at your back. Don't be a backbiter. You see, these things I'm telling you, I don't know if you like it. Some people will say, what is that? What rubbish is that guy saying? Yeah, this is the rubbish God put in my mouth this morning. Don't backbite. When you backbite your friends, when you backbite your brothers, then something is wrong with you. I met a man when I came to South Africa. He's a good man. I I loved him. He introduced me to another man. And when we left that man, he immediately began to talk bad about that man. The bad things that that man was doing. And I began to think, if he was a bad man, why did you introduce me? You are laughing. You are shaking hands. You are talking as if you are the best of friends. Now he's not there. You are saying bad things about him. I knew that would not be my friend because I knew one day he's going to talk bad about me. If he could talk bad about his long-time friend, then I knew, I took knowledge to know that this one is dangerous. This is a dangerous man to move with. When people come to you and they are destroying other people, be careful. They will go to other people and destroy you. And you should not do the same. He is the prince of peace. He has brought peace. Not violence. Not destruction. I want you to know what I'm saying this morning. He is the prince of peace. He said when they slap you, don't slap back. He said, Jesus said it with his mouth. Read the book of Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6. Read everything. He said, resist not evil. If any man compel you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Resist not evil. He's not saying not to, re- to resist not evil. is different from resist the devil. Evil is a bad character they did to you. When they slap you, when they do bad things to you, don't resist, don't retaliate. That's what he's saying. But he said, resist the devil. The devil is a personality. When somebody goes to a witch doctor to destroy your life, that is the devil. You must resist that. You must resist the forces of darkness that comes to your house to infiltrate your house and destroy your home. Anything that wants to separate you and your husband or your wife is a devil. You must resist that. You must cast it out. You must bind it. He says, behold, I give you power. So you must understand between evil and devil. God wants you to be at peace with your brothers. And God wants you to be at peace with your sisters. No, the way you look at me, I don't like it. Be at peace. I will never greet my mother again. Be at peace with your mother. She brought you to this world. Be at peace. You need to be at peace. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You see, it does not mean that you will not see people who are disagreeable. There are some people, they are disagreeable. That's why I said, if it is possible, follow peace with all men, if it is possible. There are some people, it's not possible to live peaceably with them. You separate yourself, you still love them, you regard them, you are not thinking evil about them, you are not fighting them, you are not reporting them all around, but you separate yourself from them because you know it's not easy to live with them. That we're in this world. There are people like that. This is where I'm going to stop. And today is Sunday. Make sure you go to church. Thank you again. Please rebroadcast this to your friends, to your loved ones. I know God's going to bless somebody when you send this to them. Thank you again. You are able to hear this because of the partners of I Prevail with Joseph Adenuga. Thank you, partners. And if somebody rebroadcasted this to you, you love this message, you want me to send it directly to you every day, just save this number with I Prevail. Save it. If you don't save it, you won't get the messages. The number is plus 27740302. 
0809-800-3381. Save it right now. Go to your WhatsApp or to your Telegram. Send me this simple message. Add me. From tomorrow, you receive this every day for as long as I live. Thanks again. It is well with your soul. This is your brother, your friend, your pastor, Joseph Adenuga, signing out this morning and saying to you, as usual, be blessed and remain blessed.